So on the way to buy a plant, I passed the supermarket and on the corner there was a homeless man sitting on the ground. And I always find it particularly difficult to walk past homeless people because my brother was homeless for a year and a half and I know a little bit about what it was like for him and how hard it was for my family. So as I'm walking past this man, I'm thinking, does he have a family who are worried about him? Um, hoping that he is gonna get in touch or maybe he doesn't have any family at all. Maybe that's why he's there. Um, did he fall out with his wife or his children or did he lose everything after taking a financial risk or maybe there was a house fire and he had no insurance or something and all sorts of things fly through my brain and I also wonder where he sleeps at night because I know that most homeless people don't sleep outside of the place where they beg um, and I think how I know I wouldn't be able to sleep if I was on the streets. I mean, I find it hard enough to sleep in an actual bed in a quiet room because of my insomnia problems. And yeah, and I think, imagine, imagine being in this situation and I don't want to imagine it and I feel guilty for ever complaining about being woken up by roadworks and barking dogs outside my window and yeah and I carry on and I, I see wait and then I notice most people rush past him quite quickly um, and then a man comes out of co-op with a sandwich and drops it on the floor and then rushes past um, without saying anything to him. And then I notice a boy of about 12 wearing a school uniform and he comes over to the man and he's got quite red cheeks, he looks a little bit, a little bit anxious and I wonder if, um, well first he, he puts some change in the man's pot and then he rushes off down the road and I think is he, is his mum waiting for him in the car? Um, is he using his pocket money and he's just left his friends for a bit? And yeah, I carry on walking and I walk past a pub and outside the pub there is a woman who is probably in her 50s and she looks like she's been on a night out um and this is about half three in the afternoon um her face is quite weary um she's smoking and leaning against the wall um but she's got quite a lot of makeup on and um clothes that don't look particularly warm for this time of year and i get the feeling that she's trying to escape something in her life like, like she's there because she's trying to forget something and I feel sorry for her. Um, even though I don't know anything about her story, she might be having a really good time, but there was just something that felt like maybe she wasn't. And when I reach the shop, I choose a plant and put it on the counter. And I notice the lady behind the counter. She's got a kind smile and she seems quite relaxed. And, but then I think this time of day, if I'd been working in a shop, like I couldn't see anyone else in the shop, any other workers or any other customers, and there weren't any seats and I think, I wouldn't be able to stand up this long, all day long, behind a shop counter. And because I've got a bent spine and um, I find it hard to stand up too long. And I wonder if she's feeling okay about standing up for so long. But um, then as I 
walk away, I notice her pick up her phone and smile at it and then start typing something. And then I think, yeah, I think she's having a good day and I think she's got plans later. Um, and as I'm walking back towards my flat, um, there are a group of children in front of me and they're laughing, shouting, sort of pushing each other in the streets and stuff. And the sound really hurts my ears and sort of I can feel it in my veins because my autism means that I am quite sensitive to lots of sensory stuff. And so I jump a bit and then I stand back and I think, yeah, even though it didn't feel that good on my body, um, it was still nice to hear the children laughing and just feel, sounding like they're happy. Um, and then I noticed a couple of them link arms and skip down the road. And I thought, it's nice, they've got friends and they're having a good time. And it seems quite far away from what I was like when I was at school. I was never skipping down the road home with anyone and laughing. I was walking with my head down, trying to avoid being bullied. Um, and I arrived back at my house, outside the house, and I look to the bottom of the road and I can see cars driving past, backwards and forwards, and I think, from a distance, all the cars look the same, but inside, there are bundles of different emotions and different memories and different history. I have no idea where these cars are going, where they've come from, and I think some people are probably having a really good time on the way to meet family, on the way back from a, a fun day out. And other people, they might be going to the hospital just around the corner to see someone who's ill. They might be escaping something particularly horrifying. And it makes me think you never really know what is going on in someone else's life from a distance or from the outside. And then I think the same when I look at my street and all the houses, all the houses look the same, but inside, I have no idea what's going on. And I guess that's common in general. Like we have no idea what's going on in someone else's lives, someone else's head, someone else's heart. And I think it's really important that we realize that. And I think the empathy walk really helped me get into that mindset of being open and receptive and aware of other people. So yeah, try an empathy walk. I recommend it.